Welcome back to the Peric Project. Do you know, I don't think I've ever heard someone say, I don't believe in honouring other people. And yet, we see and we hear and even sometimes as ourselves, don't respect other people the way, the way they should be. So how can it be when it's an almost and a universally accepted value to honour other people that people don't get that honour all the time. So in this next mission, of mission of 15, we're going to find a fabulous insight into this. So Rabbi Eliezer, he was the rabbi that came to Judaism later on in his life through much adversity. And he's going to tell us three keys. The first one is he tells us, let your honour for others be as important to you as your own honour and don't anger easily. By connecting these two, he's telling us that getting angry easily is what causes us to disrespect other people. And if you think about it, it is so true. When we're in control of our own anger, then we can give other people the respect that they need. Think about the times when we get frustrated at those people that are close to us. And then what happens next is a lack of respect, a lack of honour that they deserve. And listen to the words that he uses. He doesn't say don't get angry because that's it's, it's probably impossible to never get angry. But he's saying don't get angry easily. We have to be in control of our emotions and not let our emotions control us. So how do we, what's the tool to being in control of our anger. Let me share a powerful mindset tool that can help us with this. When we remember that every single thing that happens in this world happens to us for a reason, which obviously doesn't mean that the person that did it isn't responsible, but they were just an agent. It was supposed to happen to us anyway. That can help us maintain control and decide whether our reaction is justified or not. Next, Rabbi Eliezer tells us to repent one day before your death. Now, obviously, the question that comes to mind is, how do we know? when we're going to die and we don't. So what he's telling us is to treat each day as though it were our last. Now, before you stop and say, wow, that sounds morbid, stop and think. Imagine if we all lived every single day as though this was our opportunity in this world. We would be in such a state, a perpetual state of self-improvement, of living in the moment, of taking the opportunities, of doing mitzvahs. We would be the very best people that we could be. Third, he's going to tell us how to learn Torah. As we've seen so many times, Torah is not an intellectual study. It's a way of life. And that's why he tells us, warm yourself by the fire of sages. It's not enough to open up a book and just read it. But we have to learn from the warmth of a Torah personality. And I can share with you a few years ago, just before we left Vancouver, we had the incredible opportunity to meet with one of the Torah giants of this generation, Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky and sitting there and and listening to him was such a powerful incredible lesson that i learned that i could never have picked up in a in in a book to see how he listened and how he responded was so incredibly powerful and that's what he's telling us to do is to find that torah personality someone who lives by the ideals of Torah and warm ourselves by the fire of their personality. But he warns us, don't get too close lest you be scorched. It's just like fire. If you're too far away, you won't benefit from it. But if you're too close, God forbid you can get hurt. If you're too far away from a re- in a relationship with a Torah personality, you won't get the benefits of it. But if you're over familiar, over familiarity breeds contempt and it can bring us to a lack of respect which will not help us learn from them. That is Rabbi Eliezer's lessons for how to develop good character traits to live a life of mitzvot and Torah learning. 
Rabbi Yeshua may have written the next Mishnah many years ago, but for us who live in the world of social media, we will relate to what he tells us. Rabbi Yeshua was of such incredible character that people that knew him said they envied his mother for having such a son. And he's going to tell us three things that are so harmful that they can actually destroy a person. The first thing is an evil eye. Someone who's unhappy with what, with, with what he has. And he constantly just sees what other people has. And, and he, he wants what they have. He envies it to them. And for us, I think, with social media, not only do we see what people have, but we see what we think people have. And, and if we absorb it too much, sometimes it can just destroy our serenity and our peace when we look at social media and we see things that we think other people have. And we have to remember that we get to choose what, how much and what we perceive of the social media. And it's up to us to look at social media and say, you know what, I'm going to be happy for this person if it's true. I hope that X, Y, Z is true and I'm going to choose to be happy for it. And that will give us serenity and peace. The second thing is what's called the Yetzahara. What is the Yetzahara? That is our, our negative desires. What does this actually mean? Let me share with you a personal example. There's someone that I've had to make a phone call to for a long time. And I know that it's the right thing to do. But I haven't yet done it. Why? Is it because my desire, my Yetzahara has told me don't call? No. Because every time it says no, now is not a good time. Call in the evening when the kids are sleeping. And then in the evening, oh, you're so tired. Call when you'll have more energy to give it. And so it's been that for week, for day after day after day, I haven't called. Because that's how the Yetzahara gets us. It, it traps us by, by t- pushing it off or by doing a, just slipping up a small way. And then until we... It, derails us but we have to be smarter than that than it we have to we have to think of it like a coach who's there to bring out the best in us so when it comes and it tells us "Mm, don't do that or do that we have to be smarter than it and the third thing he tells us is hatred of other people when we hate someone without a cause without a due cause that also These three things remove a person from the world. Now, literally, in the physical world, these these three things, they cause us anxiety, which can literally eat into the health of a person. And they also take us away from the, the world to come by derailing us and not helping us get to achieve what we, the mitzvahs and the Torah that we need to achieve in this world.